Hello gamers, today I'm going to be reviewing the Asus TUF or TUF Gaming M4 Air mouse. A mouse with a long name and also a long list of features. How would these features shape up to my incredibly high standards? Well, I've been grinding a lot of Apex Legends recently, so I have put it through a rigorous test. So this mouse is 126 millimeters long, 63.5 millimeters wide, and 39.6 millimeters tall. This mouse weighs a very light 47 grams without the cable. It has a 1000 hertz polling rate and also six programmable buttons. The shape of this is actually similar to the G Pro wireless design, and its dimensions are also very close to it, with just a teeny deviation of around about 0.4 millimeters in difference. The lower sides in this mouse do go in a lot more, as it causes a slight gap on my pinky finger, as well as causing more of my fingers to touch the mouse pad. Regardless, it's still a good shape, but it is a bit slimmer on the front end of the mouse. I think this mouse will be great for all grip types as it doesn't really cater to just one of them specifically. For the coating, what is left of it is okay. These triangles are a bit much, and I think especially the ones that aren't holes but are more just engraved to the plastic are very annoying. The ones that are on the sides are luckily not heavily distracting, which is nice as it always annoys me when I can feel something rubbing up against my thumb. For where there is coating left untouched by the onslaught of triangles, the coating on the mouse 1 and 2 buttons are fine. There's also an interesting selling point for the coating though, and that is it's got an antibacterial guard. Asus say it can inhibit the growth of bacteria by more than 99% over a 24 hour period. So for those of you that are well, you know, disgusting, congratulations, you have a mouse that enables you more. There's even a paper that goes with it, which goes into more detail. Basically, they put E. coli on the mouse. Also, the mouse has a water repellent coating on it, so it should resist some spills and moisture. It will take around 24 hours to dry, and they do recommend making sure that you unplug it. I might test this at some point. For the mouse 1 and 2 switches, you get the KLGM 4.0s, which are rated for 60 million clicks. These have a really nice crisp feel to them. They require a bit more force than the 8.0s, which are the industry standard for most mice these days. These are honestly fine, and I don't find them too stiff at all. Someone with a more deft touch might not like them, though. The buttons that trigger these are also great, with almost no pre or post travel to them. They are surprisingly well made. The side buttons are fine also, for the most part they are in a good position, but I find that the one that sits closest to you is maybe a bit too low down and can be a bit too easily triggered for me. Not a massive issue as I don't have anything important bound to them anymore anyway. The scroll wheel is a bit stiff, it has started to loosen up over the week that I have used it, but it isn't quite there yet. At the start it really did drag, like it didn't want to scroll at all. Now it is a bit easier, but has a slight resistance to it. The switch itself is nice and crisp also, and I have no problems with it. So it's close to being a great scroll wheel, it's just a bit too rigid. Because of the shell's design, it's almost like it was made to catch dirt really. There's additional grooves that are just a breeding ground for gamer gunk, so for someone like me that likes to keep things visually clean, it can be a bit annoying. And because of all these triangles that are engraved into some areas, it's just going to be a pain if you need to clean it. Alright, so I thought I'd just do a, a quick addition, because I've already recorded the uh, audio and everything, and I'm now, you know, doing the footage and recording. I just want to really highlight how much I hate these triangles, because there's a, a bit of dirt here. I've got a cotton bud, and I can't reach the, the dirt. The dirt is still there, so... You know, whoever came up with this, when they eat their breakfast tomorrow morning, I hope they get like the remnants of it, where like most of it is just dust, because it's a pain. I've got most of it out. I've also been using a a brush as well, but that's not really been that successful either. Um, so yeah, it's just annoying. I hate it, and I hate whoever came up with this. The PTFE feet are fine on this mouse with a good coverage on the top and bottom and a sensor ring to boot as well. These feel pretty nice and have been great on all my mouse pads really. Interestingly with the sensor ring there doesn't seem to be much contact being made though. The top and bottom do stick out a bit as you'd expect but the sensor ring looks almost pressed in so it might not even be doing anything. 
For the cable you get a paracorded one and for the first time in a long time I actually will say something different with this one. It's already started fraying in the middle of the cable which isn't so great. It might have gotten a bit knotted up at some point but really I don't think it should be this bad. The cable doesn't get in the way when using it with a bungee and has also been fine without one for the most part. The cable entry point is raised up slightly so there's no immediate dragging either. I think with the cable fraying though it might cause a problem for long term use but at the moment because I won't be really using this for long term use I can't give much of an answer. However the fact that it's already started fraying in about a week that I've been using it does not look good. The software, well, it's a visual mess. I'll try to contain my personal hatred for this application, but you can do the things you wish to do. Change DPI from the four default values, which are 400, 800, 1,600, and 3,200. You can set polling rates and also change lift up distance as well. So all the stuff that you'd want. Now I can close this. Every time I think I'm done with software, one just kicks my door down and forces itself back into my life. For the sensor, it is a Pixar 3335, which is completely fine. I have no issues with it whatsoever. The mouse plays out really well. I haven't made it spin out and nothing wonky has happened during the time that I've used it. It is a common sensor now in some low to mid range mice and I don't think I've ever had any issues with any one of them that I've been using this. For in game use I have been really enjoying using it. The ultra lightweight has been enjoyable to play with with the comfort of the shape. Very surprised how much I actually enjoyed playing with it. There were a few times when I felt like I had to adjust my grip while I was playing but it's mainly just because of the more narrow front leaving some of my fingers hanging on the right. Despite that though it's been pretty solid. I've been grinding a lot on Apex Legends with this mouse and it's been good to use. There's some cases when I review a mouse that it's like oh I can't wait to swap back to my main one but but with this I haven't really had an occasion where I thought I wish I had the super light right now. For the cost this mouse sits at around about $50, 48 pounds or 54 euros at the time of this review which for a mouse like this is actually a pretty good price I feel which will lead to my verdict of I can highly recommend buying this mouse. I feel that for the price point it's a great deal and you're getting something that is very good. There are some pitfalls with the endless amount of triangles acting as a net for all the dead skin but hey at least it will inhibit the spread of E. coli. I'm honestly very surprised with how this mouse came out. I was expecting something that was a bit more mushy, fragile and a bit average to be honest. But what I got was actually a really solid and reliable mouse. The only thing that doesn't reach my dizzying high standards is the scroll wheel. I've seen that there is a wireless version of this without holes in but from what I've seen it only takes removable batteries which means that the weight is going to be a lot more dependent on the kind of battery that you place in it which is a bit of a shame. Anyway this wired version I think is great and will definitely serve you well as a high performance gaming mouse so I most definitely approve of it. That's all for this review I hope you have enjoyed it don't forget to like and subscribe and also leave a comment below with your thoughts and any recommendations of mice you'd like to see me review in the future.